Counter striking is one of the most important elements of fighting because it can do something very powerful. I mean, it can knock someone out, that's pretty powerful. But it can also do something almost as spectacular and far less obvious. It can shut down a competitor's best attacks and punish them for even using it. This is what's known as taking away an opponent's punch, or kicks or elbows or what have you. If an opponent's jab gets countered too many times, then they'll eventually just stop throwing it. Look at what happened with Spence versus Crawford. Once Spence's jab was gone, the rest of his style fell apart. There are a lot of different ways to counter, and I want to talk about almost all of them. So, let's do that. At the basis level, you have intercepting counters and return counters. This is James Tony, a master of the aggressive Philly shell. Tony loved knocking guys out with return counters. By keeping his foot aligned with his opponents and his posture narrow, he could block off most attacks and deflect his opponent's blows with his lead shoulder. Once his opponent's attack had glanced harmlessly off his shoulder, he would uncork his powerful return right, further loaded up thanks to his defensive pull. Although you don't need a unique style like James Tony to pull this off, most counters that most fighters use are return counters. The order of operation being, a fighter performs a defensive movement to avoid a strike and then returns the favor once they're safe. It's the easiest kind of counter and conveniently also the safest. A more dangerous but powerful method is to intercept an opponent's strike by throwing a strike of your own at the same time. These are intercepting counters. and possibly the greatest pound-for-pound -pound boxer of all time, Ezra Charles, was a master of them. While most fighters intercept range fighters like jabs, Charles countered his opponent's power punches with his own. Risking his opponent's hardest shot, he would create angles using footwork to ensure that he was safely out of the way, while his punch landed first. But this is only one tactic. There are other ways to do this, of course. Mayweather's guard position let him take the tighter angle so his punches would get there first. Incredible reflexes help. But usually, you'll be looking for some kind of tell so you already know what your opponent's about to throw. For example, Barboza's opponent faked a jab into a takedown so many times, it became a tell. Predictability is a gift to counterpunchers, but most opponents won't be so helpful. So great counterpunchers have ways of ensuring that their opponents throw the strikes they want them to throw. By tempting you with something too good to be true, they entice you to reach your hand into a bear trap. This is known as drawing. When a talented counterpuncher baits the specific punch they want to counter. For example, legendary heavyweight Joe Lewis would jab to invite his opponent to jab with him. Then he would cross over his opponent's jab with his insane right. In MMA, GSP used one of the best jabs of his era to draw punch combinations from his opponents. As they tried to answer his jab with strikes of their own, he was already taking them to the canvas. You can also draw with a feint, which puts you in considerably less danger if you could pull it off. After all, it's easier to counter an opponent who's busy fighting ghosts. Another potent tactic is to draw using distance traps. The great champion of Vander Holyfield would dance in and out just at the edge of his opponent's range. This was an invitation to overreach. And when they took it, Holyfield would already be fading back so that he could leap right back in with his counter. Another great way to get opponents to overreach is to just keep retreating. Ellie's famous knockout of Sonny Liston is an excellent example. Ellie catching Liston with a fight ending counter right. Using his ridiculous head movement and footwork, Ali could stay just within range, 
enticing Liston to overreach more and more until the aforementioned champion James Tony had a different technique using the same strategy. He would retreat with weaving and shifting shoulder rolls, then counter with step back hooks. Distance counters tend to hit harder as well, since you could run your opponent into the shot. It's like flipping off a motorcyclist to tail end you even closer so that you can suddenly slam on the brakes. That's a joke, don't, please don't do that. There are close range distance counters too, for those of you that like to get up and personal. Roberto Duran was notorious for pulling these off while fighting in a foam booth. Keeping his head safely on his opponent's shoulder, he would wait for his competitor to attack, then suddenly pull back to counter. Leaving yourself open on purpose is another great way to invite an opponent to attack. The ever entertaining Prince Nassim would fight with his hands down, stick out his chin, and goad his competitors on. Then, knowing exactly what punch they were likely to throw by the position he was in, he would suddenly explode to intercept with a powerful counter. Legendary champion Jersey Joe Walcott used a similar tactic, but he would actually faint head movement to draw a punch, then reverse course to attack. But you don't need to have your hands low. Lee Wiley has a great video on how Lomachenko will leave small openings in his high guard from time to time in order to counter the opponent's expected attack there. Of course, if you leave yourself open by accident rather than intentionally, you run a big risk of being knocked out. Here Joe Lewis notices his opponent drops his rear hand each time he jabs, and he immediately takes advantage of that, countering the jab with the lead hook to the exposed area. If you're leaving openings or giving tells, make sure they're on purpose. Speaking of being predictable, you can even use rhythm to invite your opponent to attack by repeatedly opening or closing your guard or moving in and out of range you give opponents an invitation to attack at the specific times you've left yourself vulnerable. Sergio Martinez would do this all the time, rocking in and out of his opponent's range like a metronome. Because he knew when his opponent was most likely to attack, he was primed to counter or slip away from danger. So countering is pretty awesome, but what if someone's trying to counter you? How do you stop them? Well, you could alter your guard, vary up your strikes, change your footwork. Those are all good options. But the best option is to faint. Faint, and then faint again, and then possibly faint more after that. Your opponent will either try to counter your fake attack, leaving themselves open, or stop countering, which is what you wanted in the first place. If they're using feints to draw your attack, then feint their feint. That will drive them insane. Marco Antonio Barrera nullified Nassim's counter-heavy style with feints, stepping, jabbing, and leaning in, only occasionally launching his own offense. This made Nassim unsure when to pull the trigger, giving Barrera the space and opportunity to throw leather. A more advanced idea is to counter the opponent's counter, seen here in the battle between Mayweather and Maidana. Mayweather had been performing pull counters perfectly, catching Maidana with well-placed right hands. So, in the later round, Maidana baited this same exchange, but countered Mayweather's right with a crisp intercepting right hand of his own. Lastly, this one isn't technically countering, but it's kind of a cool way to look at it. You can actually counter an opponent's defense. Rob Tang's amazing at this. In his fight versus Jacob Smith, he picked up on Smith's long guard and proceeded to punish him for it, looping hard punches and slicing elbows around his extended guard, starting to throw before Smith had even shot his arm out. 
you can also draw an opponent's defensive movement in order to counter it. In Mayweather's fight against Marquez, he conditioned Marquez to defend a body jab. Once Marquez was consistently defending, Mayweather instead weaved a lead hook through the new defensive gap. So, did I miss anything? I know I did, because this video was getting way too long and I have a tendency to go into way too much detail. So, let everyone in the comments know what counters you like the best, and feel free to offer some suggestions for new concept videos. I wrote a new book. It nearly killed me, but is finished. It's called Build Your Fight Style, and it's about creating your own unique system that works for you. Pick out the themes of your style, build your own combinations, alter your guard and footwork, and create something uniquely your own that's built to work for you. It's only $10 right now, and it's linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.